Why late the novella Lady Susan in particular? What was it about this particular Jane Austen story that just appealed to you as a filmmaker? Well, it had never been done, which I think was an asset, and it's her funniest piece. So she didn't properly finish it in the Jane Austen sense. She got to the end of it, but she didn't do all she would have done. But she left within it some of her funniest material, and I think best written, funniest sentences. And a lot of that we just put right into the film. So, I mean, the film is remarkably kind of contemporary, given that the period. Was that something that you had to implement, or was that already just in, in the original prose? Well, I, I think it's really interesting, different periods, because we are sort of closer to the end of the 18th century than we are to the 19th century. Um, the 18th century had a very open spirit, very funny spirit, and uh, you really don't have to update it if you just sort of portray it the right way. And of course, this was reuniting Kate and Chloe, uh, yes. which you, you've worked with before. I mean, that, do you quite enjoy that familiarity on set, to see faces that you recognize, people that you've worked with before and you can kind of trust? Exactly. And um, since I had made many films in between, they were among the last people I worked <laughs> with. So they were my, my best friends, my fondest memories. So yeah, I love working with people who I've worked with in the past. And it's, it's a little hard for me, for instance, now that I've done this film, a lot of the uh, comic actors we discovered making it, Justin Edwards from The Thick of It, um, Tom Bennett from Phone Booth, we really enjoyed their performances and it's really tempting to put them in our Cosmopolitan series. Because yeah, I mean, this felt like a bit of a sort of cinematic breakthrough for Tom Bennett, who I thought was just brilliant in the role. I mean, the, even though of course, Lady Susan is, is yes. the kind of the, the, the focal point, I did think uh, Sir James is, is quite, a, quite a character. No, and Kate's <laughs> been really gener generous because this is a huge film for, for Kate too. She's wonderful in it. And you know, there's already a lot of awards talk for, for Kate's performance in the, in the film. And you know, she's carrying it, she's brilliant. But there's this breakout performance by Tom Bennett, and she's been great about sort of helping that and fostering that. So, uh, I mean, it's great to see a sort of star emerge from a movie. Because I, I actually think this could be Kate's best ever performance today. I mean, she <clears throat> she's so fantastic in the role. It must have made your life so much easier when you're directing someone who just got the character like she does. Absolutely. I mean, I don't think there's. I think the only direction for Chloe and Kate occasionally was to to smile to 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 enjoy saying the terrible things they're saying. And and everything else was, they knew what they were doing. And, I mean, you like her the whole way through. Was that ever a challenge uh, to kind of get that kind of tone right where she is manipulating people, she can be quite vindictive, but you're always on her side the whole way through? It was terrifying because when people were just reading the script, um, a lot of people were reacting that way, that how could you make a film which with such dreadful characters? But the moment it's being played by actors, it sort of changes, everything changes. And so I don't understand how good producers can really do their jobs because they must read a script and imagine how the film's gonna be like when um, it's, it's really very hard to do. And the actors are bringing so much to it, particularly if it's comic material. And I mean, in regards to the, the sort of period setting, I mean, the, the period drama has got a real kind of quite distinctive sort of sensibility about it. And was it quite a, a challenge, an enjoyable challenge, to kind of affectionately abide by the tropes of the genre and yet be creative and unique and, and sort of stamp your own identity on this project? Well, there are really other collaborators um, putting their creative effort into it. So Anna Rackard was doing the um, produ production design and Emer, who has a very long and unpronounceable Irish name, I won't try her name, but Emer did a brilliant job with the costumes I and mean, they're just absolutely stunning. And we did sort of research, we went over all the photos of the period and we chose to make it sort of the sexiest period possible, early uh, 1790s. So uh, Chloe particularly took advantage of that. She sort of tricked me, I came to set with a lot of near nudity. <laughs> I was a bit shocked, but uh, we still have a... Uh, uh, an all-family rating, so your six-year-old can come and see it. Because, okay. <laughs> I mean, it, it's something, it's terribly English, this film, but do you think it actually helped coming in from an outside perspective and able to kind of, to make this movie without being English yourself, if that makes sense? But I think it's more that um, outsiders seem more attracted to the material, so I have a passion for the material. James Ivory had a passion for, for Ian Forster novels. Um, Ang Lee did a wonderful job with uh, Jane Austen and Sense Sensibility. And it seems that a lot of really great British directors aren't that interested in what they call heritage films. I mean, I never call it a heritage film. Um, for me, it's just a wonderful opportunity to do Jane Austen. And I was wondering too, I mean, all of the kind of Regency <clears throat> era costumes, I mean, it really t taps into our imaginations. As, as a kind of filmmaker, is that part of the, the, the job that you love most? The kind of, the world of make-believe, when you've got all of the costumes and all of the kind of buildings and the language, I mean, sort of really creating a, a particular time, is that something that really appeals to you? Um, it does, and I really realized this when I had to turn um, the script I had into a novel. There's a novel that's come out, and it's actually Jane 
Austin's publishers, John Murray Press, uh, has, has, has brought it out. And so that's the love and the title that is Love and Friendship, in which Jane Austen's lady Susan Vernon is entirely vindicated. So it's her nephew um, vindicating her. And when I started out with that, I just had these scenes, and it was this sensory deprivation to see the text of a scene without the costumes, without the actors, without the locations. And so for that novel, I had to add this narrator to give it sort of texture. But it really made me realize all the senses that are being used in a film, you know, the sound, the music, everything. And, and of course, you mentioned before that it's, you've made sort of, sort of five films, I think, across sort of 25 years. I mean, obviously some filmmakers like sort of Woody Allen who, who makes this film a year. Yeah. I mean, what's the kind of reason behind the kind of the, the breaks? I mean, do you, do you just, is it so much about ex having exactly the right material that you just got to be completely certain? Or do you like the kind of lengthy build up in the sort of pre-production? I mean, what, what's the kind of idea behind well, that? Well, I find it, uh, I, I, first I count five and a third or five and a half because I count the Cosmopolitan's pilot as a mini yeah. film. A uh, 26 minute uh, romantic comedy of, of sorts. Uh, well, there, there are two things. One is the preparation of the material and achieving it is sort of for me a four year cycle. And then if you get in a situation where projects don't go ahead, you can be sort of having these sort of film abortions, like it's a two year or three year film abortion. And I had a horrible period. Um, and I was actually trying to work out of London. I was living in Paris and I had a a lot of stories of, of interest to producers here, and they're very good about giving the, um, the script assignments, but I couldn't get the um, films done. And, and I think it, when you get out of what the industry considers appropriate material, it's much harder to make the film. So I had a Jamaican project, I had a, a project set in the Cultural Revolution in China, and you know, coming home to Damsels in Distress and now Love and Friendship was like coming home to the material the sort of industry wants me to do. And sometimes I get criticized. I think one negative review we've got in the United States criticized me for not making films about you know people of different races or something like that. And I tried. <laughs> I tried, but the industry wouldn't let me. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thanks so much for your time today. It's much appreciated. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!